welcome flip clock fans we've got a sanyo flip clock radio here i wasn't going to buy any more flip clock radios but there's a special reason why i got into this and it's this guy right here tom mcclellan he's a toronto-based photographer he specializes in automotive commercial and conceptual work but he's got this art project art, art series uh, it's actually been on display in various different places uh, he's got prints of uh, all these things he takes things apart and I was just amazed when I saw his stuff especially when it relates to the flip clock and I just had to have it so I, I actually got a print of it I'll show you that in later and I got the book so he's got a book it's called things come apart Appropriately enough and you can get this book on amazon.com so he's taken apart many many things and, and displayed them out he displays them out in uh, different sizes here all the way up to extra large he does a plane for goodness sake he did a piano as well anyway of course the flip clocks being the thing I was most interested in and later I actually take this book apart and use these is in my uh, in Flip Clock Fan Studios as display. Again, I do have a print. I'll show you that in a second, but uh, I, have, I probably need to get that professionally framed. It's, it's a weird size. So here's the... It's an airplane. Anyways, it's, it's beautiful stuff. It's amazing. It was very original. Um, and I just thought it was so cool. I, I wanted to get the actual clock that he took apart. Uh, this is the print, so you can get photographic prints. This is uh, one of the smaller versions. You can get huge prints of all those things. Todd McClellan, a part flip clock. I thought you might enjoy that, uh, being as you're into flip clocks as I am. So what are we going to do here? We're going to take this clock apart a little bit just to see if we can't fix it. There's a couple things wrong with it. We're not going to get into real detail about how to fix this. Just a quick review of some things. It may help some people because we're looking at the volume. The volume's not working very good. How you're going to fix that. We're looking at uh, the switches over here. They're, they're not up to snuff, so there's ways to clean that. We're going to talk about that and show you some of that stuff. So that's the alarm. We've often had people say they want to hear what the alarm sounds like when I do flip clocks. So we're looking at the the actual uh, model number of this. It's the Sanyo 10FA-427P. It is a Canadian clock. There is another version I believe was introduced into America, but you can see that symbol there. Uh, you, see, you always see that when you're uh, dealing with Canadian electronics. So we're going to take we're going to get into this a little bit and we're going to look at how how to fix that. Now the the first problem I run into which is a pretty serious problem is getting this knob off. Now when you're doing stuff like this, you have to make sure you know that the knobs do pull off. Uh it's pretty ba basic in a clock here so I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. We're going to use T-Rex. What I mean is sometimes they might be secured from the inside. This just needs to be pulled off. So this is an old standby where I take uh, usually I take Gorilla Tape, hook it up, and just pull hard, and it's, this doesn't work. Uh, I tried pulling just the adjuster knob, the time adjustment, then I tried pulling the alarm as well. I had to cut all that off and start over. So this is a second, I'm going to show you a secondary way to, to get these knobs off, and I'm just going to go for the time selector. I'm using some twine here, and I just kind of get it, I have to kind of secure it around like that so that when I pull it, it doesn't just pull the twine off. And then what you're going to see here is I actually give it a really hard pull. I have to make sure there's nothing behind that clock so when if the clock pulls out of my hands, it doesn't smash into something. So I had to pull really hard to get that off. It's knocked off this little end cap that goes on there. A lot of times you see those missing on clocks. It's just a little piece of aluminum, I think. We'll glue that back on. So after that, you get into this. It is an older clock, so you got the the tuner uh, is got a string, 
So I've got to get into there. So I've got to get all this off to get to this thing called a potentiometer. So that's the volume thing. And a lot of times people are looking at their clocks and they're saying my radio doesn't work. And this is how you, I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's pretty simple. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take this nut off here so I can get this t tuner off. I try to keep the string in place while I'm messing with it, and eventually I just have to give up on that. So there's the uh, the background for the tuner, and there's uh, it's lit up by incandescent bulbs. And we'll look at that in a second and talk about how you might find a replacement for something like that. It's not it's There's not a standard bulb you're going to use. You have to kind of figure out what voltage you're using, and you can do guess guessing game on that to find out what lights up I'll show you some some options so you have to unscrew this thing here to get to the potentiometer and you're gonna use let me just pull that out you're gonna use some stuff called uh, electrical contact cleaner um, you want to protect your surfaces from this stuff it's not gonna damage anything but it'll make things oily so in this case you're gonna squirt it in there and once you get some in there, you're going to work it back and forth. Make sure you're not energized when you're doing this. Now this is what you'll normally see. So in a lot of the Panasonics that you may be used to, this is what you're going to see. And there's a nice space there where you can spray some into there. And that's an actually easier one to do. You don't have to disassemble this much. Now you'll see those sliders there. That's the push buttons. We'll just squirt some in there and work those buttons back and forth. And that's going to make us... Uh, have some better connection when we're making different selections. So now the bulbs here, we've got a six volt bulb that I've got connected into the tuner display. Now that's pretty bright. And the reason is it's being overpowered at this point. So it's, it's putting out about seven volts and this would work, but it's going to shorten the lifespan of that bulb. It would be very bright. It would actually look nice. You see, you see how that lights that up but you're going to have a very low life. Now if I use a 15 or a 12 volt bulb on this, you can see that it's underpowered, which would make it last a long time, but that's kind of dim. So you're going to have to get something closer to say like a 9 volt bulb. Now I have a bunch of vintage bulbs that I bought off eBay uh years ago and I have stashes of these and so I found one that's going to work for me. So you're just going to have to look for a bulbs that work. This got the neon glow bulb, but I didn't see that at first. It took me a while to find that. I didn't realize it was even there. It was a weird place. So I have this off of an old vintage clock uh, that, that wasn't hardly used at all. So that's going to make a really good replacement there. Uh, you can get those bulbs online. Now here's the here's the framed versions. I know I could have done better on the frames, but my wife likes it when the frames are not dark. Now I'm in the corner of the living room here me and s'more listening to some nature in the corner of the world so i hope you enjoy that that's the apart flip clock by todd mcclellan and the actual type of clock he took apart well thanks for taking the time <laughs>